These five questions appear in nearly every AZ-900 exam, and mastering them could be the difference between pass and fail. Welcome to part 14. Let's dive straight into question. Question 71. Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Each correct selection is worth one point. An Azure administrator plans to run a PowerShell script that creates Azure resources. You need to recommend which computer configuration to use to run the script. Which four computers can run the script? The options are A, a computer that runs Windows 10 and has the Azure PowerShell module installed. B, a computer that runs Linux and has the Azure CLI tools installed. C, a computer that runs Chrome OS and uses Azure Cloud Shell. D, a computer that runs Linux and has the Azure PowerShell module installed. E, a computer that runs Mac OS and has PowerShell Core 6.0 installed. This question tests your knowledge of PowerShell cross-platform compatibility and Azure management tools. The key requirement is running a PowerShell script. This means you need PowerShell, not just Azure CLI, available on the system. The correct answer is a computer that runs Windows 10 and has the Azure PowerShell module installed, a computer that runs Chrome OS and uses Azure Cloud Shell, a computer that runs Linux and has the Azure PowerShell module installed, a computer that runs Mac OS and has PowerShell Core 6.0 installed. All four correct answers provide environments where PowerShell scripts can execute, either through native PowerShell installations or cloud-based PowerShell environments. Why each option works. One, Windows 10 plus Azure PowerShell module. Windows has native PowerShell support, Windows PowerShell 5.1 or PowerShell 7+. Installing the Azure PowerShell module, AZ module, adds cementlets for managing Azure resources. This is the traditional and most common configuration for running Azure PowerShell scripts. Two, Chrome OS plus Azure Cloud Shell. Azure Cloud Shell is a browser-based shell accessible from any device with a web browser, including Chrome OS. It comes pre-configured with both PowerShell and Azure CLI, along with the Azure PowerShell module already installed. You can access it through the Azure portal or shell.azure.com without any local installation. Three, Linux plus Azure PowerShell module. PowerShell Core, now called PowerShell 7 Plus, is cross-platform and runs on Linux distributions. After installing PowerShell on Linux, you can install the Azure PowerShell module and run the same Azure PowerShell scripts that work on Windows. Four, Mac OS plus PowerShell Core 6.0. PowerShell Core 6.0 and later versions is fully supported on Mac OS. Installing PowerShell Core on Mac allows you to run PowerShell scripts. Adding the Azure PowerShell module enables Azure resource management from Mac OS. If this video is helping you, support us by hitting the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Questions 72. You are planning to deploy a critical line of business application to Azure. The application will run on an Azure virtual machine you need to recommend a deployment solution for the application. The solution must provide a guaranteed availability of 99.99%. What is the minimum number of resources you should recommend for the deployment? One, virtual machines, VMs. Two, availability zones, AZs. Select the correct option to fill the blank. The options are A, virtual machines, VMs, one availability zones, AZU. B, virtual machines, VMs, one availability zones, AZs, one. C, virtual machines, availability zones, one. D, virtual machines, two. Availability zones, two. This question tests your knowledge of Azure SLA, service level agreement, guarantees, and high availability architecture. The critical requirement is 99.99% availability. You need to match Azure's infrastructure configuration to the SLA tier. The correct answer is virtual machines, VMs, two. Availability zones, AZs, two. Two VMs across two availability zones is the minimum configuration to achieve Microsoft's 99.99% uptime SLA for virtual machines. Azure VM SLA tiers, single VM with premium SSD or ultra disk, 99.9% SLA, cannot achieve 99.99% alone. Availability set, two plus VMs, VMs distributed across fault domains and update domains within a single data center, provides 99.95% SLA still doesn't reach 99.99% availability zones, two plus VMs across two plus zones. VMs distributed across physically separate data centers within an Azure region. Each zone has independent power, cooling, and networking. Provides 99.99% SLA. Why you need two VMs and two availability zones. One, minimum two VMs for redundancy. 
you need at least two VM instances so that if one fails or undergoes maintenance, the other continues serving the application. Two, minimum two availability zones for data center level resilience. Availability zones protect against entire data center failures, power outage, cooling failure, network issues, natural disasters affecting a specific location. By deploying across two zones, zone one failure, application continues running on zone two VM. Zone two failure, application continues running on zone one VM. Three, Microsoft's SLA guarantee. According to Azure's SLA, deploying VMs across two or more availability zones guarantees 99.99% uptime. This means no more than 52.56 minutes of downtime per year. Why other options don't meet 99.99% SLA? Option A, one VM, two AZs. Impossible, a single VM can only exist in one zone. No redundancy means no high availability. Option B, one VM, one AZ, single point of failure. Maximum SLA is 99.9% .9 with premium storage. Option C, two VMs, one AZ, only provides 99.95% SLA, availability set level. Both VMs are in the same data center and vulnerable to zone level failures. Quick takeaway. To achieve Azure's 99.99% availability SLA, deploy at minimum two VMs distributed across two availability zones. This protects against both individual VM failures and entire data center zone failures, ensuring your critical application stays online. To get the free PDF or mock test, comment PDF or mock or both, I will share the downloadable link within the next 24 hours. Question 73. Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Each correct selection is worth one point. You are planning to deploy an Azure solution, and as a part of this, you have to configure and manage several resources in Azure. You decided to apply a lock on resources. Which of the following are valid reasons for locking Azure resources? The options are A, prevent starting, B, prevent modification, C, prevent deletion, D, prevent stopping. This question asks for valid reasons for locking Azure resources, meaning what outcomes can Azure locks achieve, not just the names of lock types. While there are only two lock types, they can achieve all four of these protection goals. The correct answer is all four. All four options are valid reasons for applying Azure resource locks achieved through the two available lock types. How each lock type achieves these outcomes. Read-only lock achieves. B, prevent modification. Primary purpose, blocks all modifications to resource configuration, properties, and settings. A, prevent starting. According to Microsoft documentation, a read-only lock on a resource group that contains a virtual machine prevents all users from starting or restarting a virtual machine. These operations require a post method request. D, prevent stopping. Stopping a VM also requires a post method request, which is blocked by read-only locks. This prevents users from stopping running VMs. Cannot delete lock achieves. C, prevent deletion. Primary purpose, prevents deletion of the resource while allowing read and modification operations. Quick takeaway, all four options represent valid reasons for applying Azure resource locks. While Azure provides only two lock types, read only and cannot delete, these locks can achieve all four protection goals, preventing starting, modification, deletion, and stopping of resources. The read-only lock prevents starting, modification, and stopping operations, while the cannot delete lock prevents deletion. Question 74. Which of the following cloud services provides development collaboration tools, including high-performance pipelines, free private Git repositories, and configurable Kanban boards? Select the correct option. The options are A, Azure DevTest Labs, B, Azure Event Grid, C, Azure HD Insight, D, Azure DevOps Services. This question asks about an Azure service that helps developers work together using tools like pipelines, Git repos, and Kanban boards. It's about knowing which Azure tool is best for collaborative coding, project tracking, and continuous delivery. The correct answer is Azure DevOps Services. Azure DevOps Services offers a complete set of tools for developer collaboration, such as free private Git repositories for source control, Azure pipelines for high-performance CI-CD, and Kanban boards for organizing work and tracking progress. The other options are not designed for this kind of developer teamwork. Azure DevTest Labs is for quickly creating test environments, not for code collaboration. Azure Event Grid manages event routing between services, not developer tools. Azure HD Insight is for big data analysis, not development workflow. So Azure DevOps Services is the all-in-one developer collaboration platform you need. Quick memory tip, think, DevOps equals Dev plus operations. 
It's where developers collaborate, build pipelines, track work with boards, and store code together. If you see Git repos plus pipelines Kanban, always think DevOps services. Question 75. Your company has 10 offices. You plan to generate several billing reports from the Azure portal. Each report should contain the Azure resource utilization of each office. Which Azure Resource Manager feature should you use before you generate the reports? The options are A, policies, B, locks, C, templates, D, tags. This question is asking how you can organize and categorize Azure resources by office location so that you can track costs separately for each office. You need a way to label resources so billing reports can group them by office. Think of it like putting name labels on resources. The correct answer is Tags. Tags are metadata labels, key value pairs, that you attach to Azure resources to organize and categorize them for billing, management, or reporting purposes. In this scenario, you would apply tags like Office, Office 1, or Location New York to each resource. And then Azure Cost Management can generate separate billing reports filtered by these tags. The other options don't help with billing organization. Policies enforce rules and compliance on resources, not categorization for billing. Locks prevent accidental deletion or modification. They don't help with reporting. Templates are used to deploy resources consistently, not to organize them for billing reports. Once tagged properly, you can view costs grouped by tags in Azure Cost Management and generate office-specific reports easily. Quick memory tip, think of tags as price tags, they help you label resources so you know who owns what and who pays for what when the billing report comes. If the question mentions billing, cost tracking, or organizing resources, always think tags.